I began my weight loss journey after going to consultation after consultation. I would get the diet for bariatric surgery through my insurance. I didn't have the money to get cosmetic surgery at the time. I had been scammed out of the deposits, etc. Eventually, I said, F it, let me do it on my own. I had changed my eating habits and made some lifestyle changes. I started using appetite suppressants for a couple months until I became disciplined to keep it up on my own. I then lost 50 pounds and said if I maintained it, it would eventually be my treat to finally get my tummy tuck. I had been doing my research and about a couple doctors that were, you know, close by within driving distance, you know, out of the country get so much flag, like, you know, people get hurt over there, all these things happen, you get all these horror stories about out of the country and whole time, <laughs> yeah. It can happen anywhere, at any time, to anyone. Unfortunately, um, I thought I did my due diligence, um, choosing the doctor that I chose, all the reviews, his work, um, you know, his track record, whole nine yards has been outstanding. Um, I didn't find anything really bad about him from anybody. So, like, I don't know what could, what, what could have happened. But when I say... Like, and even when I'm about to share my story, like, of course, I'll have my moments of feeling like, you know, I re like, do I regret it? Like, this and that. Like, but I just know at the end of the day, any of it can be fixed. And my life is more important. And the fact is, the fact that, you know, I got on top of the situation sooner than later. Or the fact that I even, you know, just... It, it, it got handled in general because I feel like at the end of the day, it's cosmetic. It's not nothing that can't be fixed once this is all over with. And you're going to get some people like, oh, I liked you before, body, or it wasn't nothing wrong with you before. But at the end of the day, I was doing it for me and how I felt. I got tired of always feeling like I got a suit, boot, and, you know, put some type of undergarment on, waist trainer, waist belt, um, you know, and wear all those things every day after already losing my weight. But at the end of the day, it was all about how I felt and what was comfortable for me. So here's my journey. But it was me getting sick after the holidays and spending time with my family. Like, I don't know what the heck was going on, but whatever it was, baby, it had took me out. Like, I was so weak, I couldn't eat. Like, I was worried, like, if it, is, it, is it COVID? Is it flu? What is it? You know, for one, just in general, because I felt like I had been hit by a truck. Eventually, my boyfriend and my baby girl, my four-year-old, had got sick. You know, of course, they're around me. You know, they got sick and everything like that. But, my, you know, I'm like, then my cycle came on. It was just so much at once, baby. But I'm like, we're going to get it together. I went and took a COVID and flu test that was negative. And I'm like, when it's crazy, by like, the grace of God, like, I had got better literally, like, the day before my surgery. It, it was just so crazy how everything worked out. I was so worried. But I'm like, let me get my bag packed and just get my mind right, get some rest, and get going. Don't mind how my baby looks. She don't feel good. Can we have this? Say hi. It don't feel good, but she just wants to lay with her mommy. I told her I got all this stuff out on my bed because I'm packing and folding laundry. Ugh, ooh, I almost hurt my arm. But I don't wanna, I'm gonna cover you up, go ahead. You want this blanket or no? Yeah. Take them dirty socks off on my bed. Okay. Let those feet air out. Look at them toes. Twiddle them toes. Let me see them toes. Don't it feel good? Don't it feel good? Don't it, oh, look at those toesy woesies. It feel good? Let me see. See? You needed those socks off. Alright, I'm about to put the blanket over there. Where's your iPad? I just told you, baby. Okay, I'm gonna get your iPad, but if not, we can't. I got stuff to do. You, you wanna go to your room so you can watch Layla and do all you want? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. Because mommy needs to vibe and get my stuff done too. I love you. Yeah. But I can't watch Layla right now, okay? Yeah. Wanna go in your room? Yeah. 
Well, let me go get the iPad. Don't mind my room right now. But yeah, I'm just taking a little break from doing, I was putting the laundry up. But yeah, I've been watching these little, watching these vlogs of other people getting ready or how their journey was. But everybody kept saying, because I'm going to New York and it's only two and a half hours from where I live. So everybody was like, well, you can come back home. But this is exactly why, because I'm watching another mom video. She was like, it was, it was tough. She was like, when I came home, my baby wanted to be hell. She wanted to cuddle. And it was already doing it right now. But her not feeling well, you see her over there. She done found her way. I had all the piles of laundry in here. She like, mom, did you, did you do it yet? Cause I get, can I get in your bed? But I already know that's how it's going to be. The mom guilt or it's just like, I just can never just come home and just chill. It's just impossible. I guess it's just really truly impossible for her. Moms to just chill, you know what I mean? It's always even even not feeling well. They thousand things they want you to do. So yeah, that's exactly why I said I'm gonna do an extra day and stay at the hotel to just kind of recoup because if I come back, you know, rush back and then she want mommy, mommy, mommy because she misses me. Of course, it's gonna be hard, but it's like I gotta do it that way, especially with me not being able to give her as much attention, doing as much as much up and down and everything like that. But just to kind of hear um, people's um, real experiences. Um, 14 month old wanted to sleep with me, so um, she was, was cramped up on there. So then I said, I give up. Let me just try to sleep in my bed. So I've been sleeping in my bed with my back um, reclined with about three pillows behind my back and about two pillows um, up under my um, my thighs and my knee. And that's been working out pretty good. Um, I'm not on any pain meds. I stopped taking pain meds. Okay, so my surgery was Thursday. I had to stay at the hospital overnight. I came home Friday evening. So Saturday was the last day that I took um, oxycodone Percocet. Yeah, but I had, I've had three C-sections, so, you know, God willing, I'm all be good. I did just buy a couple. I um, bought a couple, like, sweatpants or a little, put, like, uh, just black pajama pants. I mean, I've, a lot of stuff is black between, you know, bleeding from the procedure, being on my cycle, whatever. I'm not even on my cycle heavy. It's just that I don't like to bleed through clothes. I just, I'm not doing it. Like, you know, I'm gonna be all hunched over. I ain't got time to be trying to get in the car and got blood on my front or something and don't even know. So it's about to be mostly all black everything. I'm gonna take these two little homie nightgowns or this big oversized shirt that I usually wear around the house because it's like if some happens well I don't really care and they're so and they comfortable they just they just comfortable so but everything I'm packing is just a bunch of stuff for comfort sweatpants I got this little pajama uh, set but nothing major um I almost forgot the pack I wasn't gonna pack a bra because I ain't never got a bra one but I said I mean at least pack one for when I go to the doctor but time to get this bag packed for real, for real. Stop playing. I'm gonna pack everything in this. This is my all-purpose big old bag. This thing is so huge. So it's the best thing ever. It's supposed to be like one of the cooler bags, but I use it all-purpose every day. So yeah, but just a couple of sweatpants because I know. It's colder up there. We, you know what I mean? It's colder in New York compared to here. So I'm gonna just pack some of this stuff up. I'm gonna go my clothes. So I'm the pajamas. I'm staying for like six or seven days. This is my satin pillowcase. I know we're not gonna be able to wash our body. I mean, wash our bodies or put lotion on, um, like uh, like with my face wash or you know moisturizer, cause uh, we have to use like an antiseptic soap. So I'm like the least I can do, cause my face has been dry already as I prepare. So I'm like, at least let me bring my satin pillowcase. Um, I got my vitamins. Um, I got my Pedialyte and my Insure. I got all my stuff over here. 
So I got my vitamins, my Tylenol extra strength, my protein drink. But yeah, I guess I probably have to have a separate bag for my food and stuff so it's not making my bag super heavy. I got these um, reusable pads. Let's turn my light down a little bit. I got these reusable pads for the bed so that I'm not like um, bleeding through anything and um, we can wash these. So I did buy a, a four pack of these. I got um, just these little black underwear. Oh, I thought I got them a little bit bigger, but I hope to go. I wonder if they're going to go over my little, um, you know, you be all padded up and all of that. I'm going to still bring them. We'll see. But they are my, uh, I guess they are my real size, but I was trying to go, you know, get stuff a tad bit bigger because I'm going to be swollen. But I'm going to still um, bring those. I got my compression socks. I did a take a bath for a few days. So I got these to just kind of, you know, bathe myself. I don't know why in the world I would say a couple days when it had ended up being a couple weeks. Thank goodness I'm not the type of person that really, you know, perspire, sweat, you know, or have any odor or anything like that. You know, for the most part, well, I can't even say for the post part, but I really don't. So I'm like, I was grateful for that because that was a struggle for me. I was stressed out not being able to, you know, take a shower. You know, I would just have to take, you know, bath, like wash up or take like baths and different stuff like that, but not fully submerge myself due to having the drains or open, you know, open areas and everything like that. If you see me scratching and itching in the video, please understand. But I swear I went on, well, I, I was on some, uh, some drugs, but it was due to just, it, it was due to me just my skin being dry, not being, you know, I had to, you know, wash my body with antibacterial soap for, you know, pretty much the whole time, um, you know, leading up to it and during my whole process. But not only that, it's like I couldn't use any, you know, creams, lotions, you know, any moisturizers or anything. So, baby, when I say my skin has been so freaking dry, I'm like, when this is all over with, I'm going to have to reprogram my skin, my hair, just every day one thing. But just, I, I'm, I'm going to come out, I'm, I'm going to come out good on the other side. Just arrived at my cousin. She's gonna be my support person. So we are packing the car so we can get on this road and head to New York. We are about to get on the road. We have packed the car and it is currently 4.50. And it says that we will be there at 7.07. I have not been able to eat in days, but my cousin just made me this bomb plate. And I'm mad because we didn't got the chilling and talking and chewing. So I ain't even look, show y'all my little plate, but she made me a little turkey wing, a little bit of rice and some greens. It was just enough because a girl has not had an appetite. But we're about to get on the road. This will be my last day with any moisture or anything since I can't put no oils on. Say hi to my cousin Nay. She's like, bitch, don't play. You said you was driving birds. <laughs> you wanna put the other seat um, up since we our stuff could fit regular? Are you good? Call me when y'all get to your destination. I'll be up. Okay, we'll we'll FaceTime. Yeah, I'm about to say she gotta get her lesson and stuff. <laughs> Cousin came and stayed today. We done had a real road trip. Pillows and walkers and food.
and like I said, I know it's gonna be some people like, if you did any of that, you was fine. But y'all see the excess skin and fat after I have lost weight in all the other areas I wanted to remove. Today is surgery day. It is, it was today, Tuesday? Tuesday, January 2nd at 6 a.m. Um, we just got up on our way to the surgery center for my pre out because yesterday was the holiday. We doing everything on the same day, but we will keep you posted. Luckily, um, the facility is only like less than 10 minutes away from our hotel. Um, The time it was surgery day, I had actually ended up losing an additional 10 pounds due to being sick. That following day, I had my first post-op appointment at 6 in the morning. Um, and then after that, we had went to go look. We, I just had a craving so bad for a good smoothie since I really didn't have like a heavy or big appetite. So we found us a smoothie, um, a good smoothie from this place called Hawa Smoothies. And it was so good. So then we went back to the room and got ourselves together. Of course, the day of surgery, all I did was sleep. I was worn out, medicated, whole nine yards. So I started my vlogging at day two. And here my cousin is helping me change my bloody cloth. Cloth on care services will be open soon for business. For any for any healthcare service professional services. This here, night here, at the you care. We're gonna call it Cawthorn <laughs> Care because it's gonna be all the care you need. Right. Post op care, health care, <laughs> child care, chauffeur care. It has been a long few days. I stayed in New York. I've been here since January 2nd. I don't even know what today is. Today is January 5th. And I want to be home in time for my baby's birthday tomorrow. But I am on my way home. Thank you, New York. Today is... I don't even know. You know you be home so many days. You start to lose track of your days. Um... January 7th, I had my procedure on the 2nd. I came home Friday night, which was the 5th. Um, my brother brought me home. And, cause I wanted to be home in time for my baby birthday. Her birthday was on the 6th, which was yesterday. And I could've just stayed my ass where I was at. My kids, well, the baby been treating me wrong. Kept wanting me to come home, only for her to keep me being mean. Came home to some fuck shit with my man, which never happens, but that done pissed me off, set me back. But I'm just exhausted. I don't even know where to, where to start sometime, man. They don't talk about all the emotional stuff and all everything else that come behind me. I still got my dreams in, but I'm ready to take them out. I can't wait because I need a full shower. I'm tired of these wash up. I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> but let me show you. I had kept my white binder on only for like the first couple days until my drain lanyard came. And once that came, I um, took my binder off. But when my binder was on, I didn't have it on tight or anything. Just, you know, wrap very tauntly, just enough to kind of keep my gauze and stuff like that in place. But those drains were so annoying. I felt like every little thing I was doing, you know, whether it be stand up, use the restroom, I felt like I was pulling them. I could not wait to get those out. My 
my mom always said I ain't have no coof and would just send or show her anything. She'd be like, I didn't ask for that. But see, I just wanted to be completely transparent with y'all about my whole experience and everything that I had to do with my care and my journey and everything that you, you know, the, the behind the scenes. On this day, you'll notice my bruising starting to change colors. The next day, it started to look better. I was getting a little hope. I was getting a little hope. One thing for sure, two things for certain, like I said, those drains was hell and even worse getting them out. Shout out to my nurse for always being there, giving me her undivided time, attention, love and care. She was always a call away, a text away, constantly checking on me. She was always on time. Just don't She's been there through the whole process before, it comes after. Time, it'll come time. Just, just don't through all okay. of it. When I had yeah, moments of doubt, just, just being scared. a positive spirit for me. Surgery. Like this week was very emotional. Um, I feel like I had cabin fever. I've been indoors since January 1st or 2nd. <laughs> it's the 13th. Yesterday was my birthday. And I, I just thought I was having cabin fever and just be me and the bunny in the house. You know, my man be at work, and when he get off of work, he's doing daddy duties, you know, pick up, strap off, dance, cheer, you know, all those things that I'm highly grateful for. You know, when he comes home, of course, but I be missing my little family doing their thing. But the, just the emotional aspect of things. And the other part, um, I had to get a different type of, like, cut. Um, for myself, it wasn't like just a straight across at the bottom. I had to get like a T cut up to like my belly button. But if you have gone through, you know, these type of surgeries or anything, baby, you can attest to the emotional roller coaster. I swear I had cried like five times, just random, just so much different emotions. Because when I say we're dealing with so much, it's crazy. But anyway, back to the reason why I had to get that type of incision whole time I must have lost too much weight and he said he didn't have enough fat or hang or fupa to do what needed to be done although that was still a little weary for me again I'm trusting him as the professional but I don't agree with that I don't agree with that they waited to the date of my surgery to tell me that when I had submitted and had a virtual consultation back in March and it's like at that point they should have given me my if ands buts you know what I mean? And, you know, this is what you might have to get them, you know, based off of, you know, what your pictures are. But they didn't tell me till my money was paid. I was already in there and it was a day of. Didn't really give me time to kind of process any of it. As you'll notice, my incision started to get darker and darker. It became necrotic tissue and the skin couldn't heal. So my incision was separating more and more by the day. I had already been bleeding out of it. I had had three ER visits to try to get help. Um, nobody, you know, wanted to touch it, of course, because it was somebody else's work or, you know, God forbid something happens. So all they kept saying was, you know, eventually for me to just go back to my doctor. It was times where I was feeling faint, so I don't know. I ended up needing, um, I ended up needing wound care. So it's um, 6 a.m. And today is January 18th. Um, one of my incisions opened and it's just been like oozing blood. Um, like it's just been like oozing blood. Um, and not only that, the bruising area, which is usually normal, you know, but each day like my bruising would change and now it's almost black so it's like the tissue around her is dead by the grace of god like i say all the time i'm just so freaking blessed for my clients that have turned family and friends um my girlfriend is going to come get me at 7 a.m it's 6 and i'm about to hurry up and try to get myself together you know brush my teeth get dressed um I gotta find my little clamper thing so that i can pick up my deodorant i bought this little clamper thing so that I can stop um, bending over, getting stuff, and doing all that. But at the end of the day, when you just, you just gotta do stuff. Like, especially if you're a mom, a single mom, like, stuff just needs to be done. I've been trying to be obedient um, about my recovery process and do things. You know, I know my cousin kept that. People kept like, you doing too much. But it's not by choice. It's like, if I don't, if I don't do it, it won't get done. You know what I mean? If you're a mom, 
or a woman, you know what it means. If you don't have a huge support system, people waiting on you, hanging up. But now my daughters have truly been amazing. Um, and I'm going to just leave it at that. Without trying to, you know, damn other people in the process. But yeah, or kick people while they down. Whatever the case may be. All I can do is worry about me and getting back to a better health. But I text, I was in the hospital for two days just trying to get help and they pretty much were saying in the most professional way in my area that they can't really sew me back up so it's best to go back to my surgeon. So when I was in the ER, they contacted um, my surgeon for um, them to be able to know the severity, I guess, or how they feel about what it's looking like. So they asked me to come back to New York today. Um, originally they said 8 a.m., but I'm like, that's kind of early. I don't, I live two and a half hours away. So my appointment is at 10. So like I said, I'm about to wash my hands, get myself all together, brush my teeth, you know, all of that. And yeah, so I will keep you guys posted. Like I said, nobody talks about, you know, all the behind the scenes process or the what if, you know what I mean? Because it's just like everybody, you know, just, it just, I mean, and it might be like that. I feel like I'm just that 5%. Who knows? I can't say. I'm going to take my accountability for probably doing too much, but it's not my choice. And I have learned my lesson, but let's just get, let's need to hear it there. Let's get it solved because it, it's, for, it's for safety reasons. For safety reasons, like it don't even matter. Like we, we that's neither here nor there. So I'm sorry, you better not make me feel no type of way either. And you better not make me feel no bad vibes or type of way either. Like you know what I mean? You know how when somebody make you feel uncomfortable? Like I don't know. Like I know you went down there and talking shit about my work. <laughs> I don't know. What's, we don't matter. But I'm just happy that my friend was able to go and be a support. And we're going to get this out the way. I don't know if they have to put me back to sleep. Or if they're going to just numb the area. Or what they're going to do. But something got to be done. Because like I said, I've been oozing out my incision for four days. But just pray for me. And I will try to vlog and keep you guys posted as possible. When I say majority of my days, I be so mentally drained. Emotionally drained. that I don't even have the strength to talk. But... I'm trying to vlog and keep y'all posted, you know, as much as possible. But, yeah. And shout out to having daughters. Because I'm in here trying to get myself together. My oldest is in there about to start the car. I'm going to put the car seat in so that I can take the car seat to my girlfriend's house before I go. So that she can pick her up. My middle is helping me out. And she's in there getting her dressed and ready. Cause it's 6 18 and I have to get her to daycare or get her to school I have to get her to um my bad I was trying to I have to get her to school before I hit the road um by 7 I have to do it cause everything is closed my girlfriend is closed the school is closed where my body been feeling dry for days. I have not been able to really have the strength to put no, um, no moisturizer or nothing on. And typically, I'm not a person that has a hard time healing. Like, you know, I've had three C-sections. I've had the surgeries. But, yeah, I don't know. I have to moisturize my skin. Because I'm telling y'all that feeling so dry, so bare. I don't think my skin's ever been this dry. It's so cute though, because my girlfriend is coming to get me. She brought me this um, night shirt for, um, she brought me this night shirt for Christmas. She's so sweet. And some Victoria's Secret that I have not, I mean, Bath and Body Works. I'm not a Victoria, I haven't ever heard of Victoria's Secret. Well, I always say it like that, like they're not still around. But as far as like their perfumes and stuff. But um, she brought me some champagne toes. Um, for Christmas. Yes, baby. You can put this on for me. So she said I can ask somebody else. Well, tell her, let's start with turning your dress around. Your dress is on backwards. Did you get yourself dressed, Art? 
child. Bye, baby. Have a good day. Love you. Leah says she can't do it because she said I got to ask somebody else. Okay, I'll do it. So I have to ask somebody else. Okay. Come here. Let's start because your dress is on backwards. Come over here. Okay. And then my huh? sweater. And then my shoe. Uh, Just put on the seat. This big one right here? Yeah. It's not even Carsey in there. I'll take that one out. I'll take the other one out because it's, but, yeah, I'll take the other one out because it's easier to work with anyway. But, it felt. That's usually the spare car seat, but I'll just take the other, I'll just have her take the other one out because it's lighter anyway. Take your dress off, baby, it's backwards. I want to use the baby one today. What's that one? It's like. The one in the car or the one by the door? The, the one by the door. No, we can't do all that. Today you can't ch choose. I'll give you, I'll let you choose all the time, but today we got to do what's best for everybody, okay? okay? And I don't want Siobhan or whoever to have to deal with that heavier car seat. So you want to sit in the one that's usually in my car, okay? Okay. So it's easier. All right, let's turn it. No, no, you don't have to turn it all the way around. All right, then put your arms back in. We got to turn, we got to turn your dress around. chapstick on you, okay? Okay. We'll get some chapstick on you. Start putting them on. Alright, go see if Fia can put you on. Here, let me put your sweater on for you. Okay. And Fia's just going to have to put your shoes on. You okay? Yeah. Here, Mommy's going to show you a trick, okay? okay? So that your sleeves don't go up. So hold it when I put your stuff on. Hold, hold your sleeves like this. Hold it. Are you gonna help mommy? Hold your sleeve like that. Hold it good so that when I put this on, it doesn't mess up. Are you holding it? Yeah. Hold it. Yeah. Good job. There you go. All right, now hold that one. Good job. Such a smart girl. Who's that? Yeah. Come, come help Sissy put her uh, boots on, please. Let me sit here. Let me, let me button it at the top like that. You fancy, girl. Let me just put some water on and brush your hair. Massage. What you know about a massage? I like it. I like massage. Just hold the tongue up real good so that it don't slide down. Sugar, your feet better not be growing already. I was so happy just to be outside. I look at the scenery just just to enjoy the outside air, the different scenery, being passenger side, passenger for once because I'm always driving, just all of it. But we had to head to New York so that we can get to the bottom of this and have the surgeon see it so that we can get ahead on this before any infections or anything start. And I appreciate my girlfriend, Carla. She's like another mother to me and she made sure mama was good. So... Once we were done standing, we grabbed some food and then we got on the road to head back home. Um, so I needed to come home and, you know, start packing my bags. I wasn't, her I wasn't prepared to stay. So I came home to start packing my bags and prepare for me to have an emergency surgery so that we can get a handle on this before things get worse. Shout out to my client slash other mother, Hanuna, who came with me the second time. My procedure went well and everything. Once we got back to the hotel, we tried to get some rest, but 
the some girls next door was causing a whole havoc so once my appointment was over this morning when i went to go see the doctor for a follow-up we left um it was a little bit um devastating to kind of see what my body looks like but we'll be heading home for me to get my healing journey started all over again